it has been a while since I've posted a soap making video, but recently I was watching uh, some old videos by uh, Terry at Tree Marie Soapworks, and um, one of the ones she made served as an inspiration. So I'm not really duplicating today what she did exactly, but it should be somewhat similar in the end. And so uh, I will put this link down in the description so you can just click on it if you'd like to watch her version. This is the recipe I'm going to use. This needs to be a pretty slow moving recipe. So uh, I'm using uh, lard as well as tallow and sunflower oil, which all of those will tend to slow it down. Not too much shea butter. I would often use 15 or 20 percent shea butter in a soap, but that can also speed it up. And um, and then a relatively small amount of coconut oil. So it should be quite slow. I'm using uh, Florida orange blossom honey in it and uh, also some sodium lactate to harden the bars. And then I'm going to scent it with lemongrass essential oil. And that's such a strong scent that um, I'm using soapcalp.net here. I have reduced their default fragrance ratio from uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.35. I think that'll still be plenty lemony scented. And I'm going to use seven colors similar to what Terry used in her soap. Uh, white, uh, all of these are going to be from Nurture Soap except for uh, the orange one. So winter white, black pearl mica for black, northern lights for kind of a lilac -y purple, sky blue for a nice uh, uh, medium blue, celadon green for a light green, and then from uh, Brambleberry Racing Stripe Orange, which, as it says there on the label, will fade to a soft orange in cold process. That's exactly what I want, kind of an orangey yellow. And then rose pink for kind of a hot pink. I don't usually show or talk much about preparing my original materials, but I have my oils here all together. They the uh, lemongrass essential oil is already in there. Um, I weighed out my hard fats and melted them in the microwave and then added my liquid oils to that and um, they've been cooling since. And then my lye water, the recipe calls for 700 mils of water. Uh, I only used 500 in it to dissolve the lye and then I used another 100 to dilute the honey, uh, which I warmed up. And then also the last hundred I distributed among my uh, colorant pitchers to pre-moisten the micas. So all together we've got 700 milliliters of, wa liter milliliters of water, which is quite a uh, wet recipe, but I do want this to be slow. The um, orange blossom honey was much lighter than this looks here. Uh, it, when it hit the line, it, it turned kind of dark, almost like brewed tea. So I'm hoping that won't add too much color to the uh, final soap. So at the moment, my oils are at 101 Fahrenheit, and well, so is the lye water. So that's reasonably cool. I think I'm ready to go here. I'm using a Brambleberry 18 bar mold, and so that um, works well with a 65 ounce recipe, which is what this is. That's a good emulsion already, hoping it doesn't harden too fast, but I'm going to distribute it to the colors right now. As I've said in other videos, the winter white mica from Nurture Soap, I like it a lot, but it has the habit of forming a kind of a layer of crud on the bottom of the pitcher, so you really need to loosen that up before you add your soap batter to it, otherwise it may just stick in the bottom and never really mix in very well. It's almost like mixing cornstarch in water. As usual, I'll speed up the video or clip parts of this out while I mix. Uh, 
I'm not noticing this thickening any further, but it's at a really good emulsion right now, so I think I'm going to pour it. I'll move the camera so you can see that better. Now, I don't think it really matters what order I pour these in. They're just going to be kind of blobs all over the mold. See already. This is thin enough that it's trying to mix in. I'm going to try to get my pitcher tip close, although that's hard to do without touching the pitcher to the batter. Noticing some definite thickening now, so I need to finish this up pretty soon. And for the top layer, um, I want lots of spots of the different colors close together, so I'll do that with some smaller spots here.
to use up a little bit more glue. Now, white is last, so I'll just, I'll make really small spots of that to just touch up some areas, give them a little bit of contrast. The white is the one that is showing the, uh, color of the honey, as you might expect. So it's kind of a creamy color rather than truly white, but I think that's okay, and I won't be surprised if it lightens up as the soap hardens. Just use a little drizzle of some of these as I scrape out the pictures. So that's all the batter. Now what I want to do is um, do a herringbone pattern, kind of like in a, a double Taiwan swirl, to finish this off using the thick handle end of a chopstick. And I'm making these stripes pretty close, probably between half and three quarters of an inch apart. Do the same thing in the other direction. I'm tempted to do a little more in a couple places, but that's always dangerous. Might turn it muddy. I'm gonna, at least going to stripe this one one more time. And then go across here one more time.
And I've switched to the thin eating end of the chopstick to do that. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So, as I usually do, I will spray this with uh, alcohol. I'll put in the mold dividers and then I will uh, kind of cool C pop it at 55 Celsius for a couple hours. And we'll have a look at it after it's hardened tomorrow. So here is the soap right after it's poured. And here it is with the bar dividers in it. It's the next day and the soap is ready to be unmolded. Um, this batch produced, for all practical purposes, no soda ash at all, so I don't think the tops will be need, need to be shaved in any way. So here's the loaf right after it's dumped out of the mold. Um, interesting pattern there, I think. Uh, the, I can see there is a little bit of glycerin river formation, especially in the white parts. Not too surprising, and I don't dislike that. Here are the soaps out of the mold and the bars separated. I'm pretty pleased with the way these turned out. These are tops. Um, of course, I'll bevel off the corners later, but they're still pretty soft, so I'm not going to do that just now. These are um, sides. The two on the left are where the bar dividers had punched through. The one on the right is against the mold wall. And then these are ends, uh, same deal. The two on the left were against the mold wall, while the two on the right were where the uh, bar divider went through. And then um, bottoms, the two on the top here were um, not shaved. They, they just are the what was against the mold. And then the two on the bottom I shaved just a bit off uh, to get a little better co color there.